In today's web-driven world, ensuring that the right users have access to the right resources is crucial. Authentication lies at the heart of this, serving as the gateway that allows web applications to distinguish between those who are authorized and those who are not. Without effective authentication, the security and integrity of web applications could be at risk. When users interact with a web app, they often move seamlessly from one page to another, accessing personalized content without repeatedly logging in. This fluid experience is powered by authentication tokens, typically stored as cookies, which the browser sends automatically with each request. These tokens allow web servers to recognize and trust that the user is who they claim to be. In View Mastery's Nux Authentication course, we'll explore the foundational principles behind web authentication in Nux.js. We'll explore managing sessions, handling tokens, and implementing secure authentication practices. By the end, you'll have the knowledge to create reliable, secure authentication systems that enhance both the security and user experience of your Nux apps. If you're newer to Nux, you can check out my other two courses, Real World Nux and Nux API Route, as a prerequisite for this course. These are part of the full Nux playlist available on View Mastery. For a real world project with real users, it's recommended to choose a battle tested, full featured authentication solution and be done with it. There are many reasons why you should do that instead of implementing an authentication system by yourself. For instance, if you are to rely on your own DIY authentication implementation in a production setting, you would have to carry the burden of learning all the ins and outs of cybersecurity, and your implementation would need to be flawless. So the general advice is to use something that just works out of the box. That being said, as competent developers, we still need to understand the mechanisms of an authentication setup and why each part is needed. This knowledge is critical when it comes to adopting and managing an authentication solution. As a web developer, you should be equipped with enough web security knowledge to write code that avoids obvious security flaws. So for learning purposes in this course, we'll be using a minimalist authentication library called Nux Auth Utils to implement an authentication flow that involves server API routes and front-end pages. This library is actually written by Sebastian Chopin, one of the original Nux library authors. Throughout the course, you'll learn about the different layers of an authentication system, user session management, implementation of API routes on the server side, implementation of pages and forms on the client side. We'll explore topics that always come up in the discussion of web authentication, such as the notorious CSRF attack and how to mitigate it, stateful authentication with the database versus stateless authentication with JWT. So this course is not about Nux of Utils or any one authentication library. It's about the patterns typically found in a web authentication setup. You'll be able to use this knowledge and apply it to various different authentication libraries throughout your career as a Nux developer. In the next lesson, we'll start with the general overview of an authentication setup. In this lesson, we'll learn about the overall authentication pattern and set up a sample app with SQLite and Nux of Utils so that you can follow along with the code in the course. Starting code will be available in the lesson resources. Nux of Utils is essentially a session management tool. In fact, most web authentication solutions are mainly helping you to manage the session. Some offer more features while some offer less. But fundamentally, their features are integrated around the core of session management. But before we dive into how Nux of Utils can help us to manage the session, let's define what a session is. A session is basically a state that records the login logout status of a user. It's usually stored within an HTTP only secure cookie in the browser and in a server side database with the database copy being the single source of truth. 
Nuxoft Utils provides server-side utils, API routes, and client-side utils to help us to manage a session. On the server side, you can use these functions to create, read, update, and delete a session. On the client side, you can read and delete a session with the all state component and the use user session composable. The component and composable get the session through the API endpoint. There's a get route and a delete route. We don't have to use them directly, but the client side utils will need them. Since Nuxoft Utils is still under active development, you might find this future API different from what we are showing here. But it's important to understand that all of these utilities are just layers of abstractions around the session. They exist to help us to implement an authentication flow. The authentication flow will need some new API routes for sign up, login, and lockout. A server middleware to verify each request to see if it has a valid session. We use the server-side utils to implement the server, middleware, and API routes. On the client side, we'll need the corresponding pages to sign up, log in, and log out. We use the client-side utils to implement the pages. Now that we see the general authentication flow and how Nuxoft utils can be used, let's start setting up an example app so that we can start implementing it. To follow along with the code in this course, you can clone the GitHub repo for this course, which contains a couple of sample pages, a couple of script files to generate the database, a bunch of session-related util functions to interact with the database, a bunch of dependencies used by the database utils. Run npm install to install them. Next, we'll add Nuxoft utils to project as a Nux module. This will install the package and add it as a module in the config file. By default, Nuxoft Utils doesn't provide any database support. The Utils DB functions will help you to manage the session state in the database without writing any SQL commands. This helps us to focus on just learning authentication. Now let's run the create DB script to create the SQLite database and a user's table. You can see the exact SQL command in the script file. Basically, it opens a connection to a database file called db.sqlite. If it doesn't exist, it will be created for you. Then it runs an SQL command to create a user's table. The table has five columns, ID, username, password, hash, and two tokens. This is where the session will be saved. We'll talk about the CSRF token later in the course. But as you can see, our user's table doesn't have email. Email verification and password reset are out of scope for this course. We're only going to focus on the core authentication logic. What's more important right now is that you should see a new db.sqlite file created in a root folder. If you use a software such as DB Browser for SQLite, you'll be able to see the actual user's table created in the database. We're using SQLite because it's more convenient for learning purposes, but for production projects, you would opt for a production-grade database system such as MySQL or Postgres. To keep our authentication set up database agnostic, we'll be using the utils DB functions to interact with the database. In the next lesson, we'll use these utility functions along with Nuxop utils to create API routes with sign up Lock in and lock out.